long for Nuke, who reaches up, he's got it, and there's Orange in the end zone, touchdown! After a phenomenal junior season, Nuke Hopkins is going pro. We look at where he could go in the NFL draft. And this is the biggest lead of the night from Miami. North Carolina loses again, now 0-2 in the ACC. And it's not getting any easier. Next up, on the road in Tallahassee, is it panic time for the Tar Heels? And number one Duke faces a huge road test from the Wolfpack. How the Blue Devils will need to adapt with Ryan Kelly sidelined indefinitely. This is ACC Live Tip Off. Welcome to ACC Live. This is our final show of this very first week of the program. I'm Jeff Fischel here for the ACC Digital Network. It's Friday, that means tip-off. That means Mike Jaminski is here to take us through every one of the big games this weekend. We'll look at the matchups. We'll get his predictions as well. But first, some breaking football news. The ACC has released its conference matchups for the upcoming 2013 football season. Who's home? Who's away? Who's got the big games? For all of the, these games, check out the entire list at the ACC.com. The conference has all the matchups. Now, there are no dates yet. That's coming up likely next month. And, of course, we will make sure we have that breaking news for you as well. But, again, see who's playing who in the 2013 football season on the ACC.com. We will have more on this story later on the ACC Digital Network. All right, the big football news last night. It came from Death Valley. A day after Taj Boyd decided he was staying for his senior year, his top wide receiver last year, DeAndre Hopkins, announced he's leaving a year early for the NFL. ESPN draft guru Mel Kuyper says Hopkins is the number three junior wide receiver in the country. Some mock drafts have Hopkins going as early as the late first round. His 2012 season will leave him in the record books for a long time. Hopkins had 82 catches, set a Clemson single season record 1,405 receiving yards. His 18 touchdowns weren't just a school record, but an ACC record as well. Let's talk hoops now. Mike Jaminski's here, and Mike, last night, Miami dropped North Carolina to 0-2 in the ACC, 68-59 the final score. All right, first of all, the Tar Heels had no answer for Kenny Kaji. No, he was outstanding last night, and they really needed him to step up with Reggie Johnson being hurt. Not a true post player, but a guy who can cause a lot of problems, score a lot of points. He really did cause a lot of problems, especially right. I mean, he would pick, and then he'd roll out and stretch the defense out. Yeah, and that's a play that they've gone to a lot with um, – uh, and, and again, in the absence of Johnson, that uh, they run that high pick and roll. He's a stretch guy, a stretch four, a guy who can step out and shoot the three. Outstanding last night, 18 points, and more importantly, four blocks. Two of them at the end of the game that were really instrumental. And when they weren't worrying about him, other guys were getting open for three-pointers. So now the Tar Heels 0-2. You know Tar Heel Nation, very worried right now. What's wrong with UNC? Well, they're just not constructed like, like Roy Williams' teams, and uh, they're having trouble at the point. They're not manufacturing easy offense. They don't have a true post player, and their perimeter guy's not shooting great. We've seen James Michael McAdoo be relatively productive, Reggie Bullock as well, but they're not getting enough help. No, and, and you know, the, the key is to have other guys step up, and um, but they haven't found that. I, again, defensively, they've had some lapses and late in the game, and I think they just have a crisis of confidence right now. All right, so let's look ahead now to the upcoming weekend. Let's take a look at the weekend menu brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. Mike, Virginia visits Clemson. Well, I think Clemson a lot, of, a lot better at home, uh, better offensively, uh, although Joe Harris really a nice player of Virginia, stingy defense. The Tar Heels have to win in Tallahassee to avoid an 0-3 start. Yeah, it's going to be tough, too. Florida State usually plays them well down there, and they've figured some things out in the last couple of games, 2-0. They have looked very tough. Virginia Tech travels. The Hokies will be on the road in Atlanta. Well, Eric Green the leading the conference and scoring, having a terrific season, but they are really depleted. And um, I, I think Georgia Tech gets it together, gets their first ACC win. They really looked like a team, very cohesive, just yep. not always enough parts. Boston College and Wake Forest both one and one. Yeah, coming off a good game, Boston College uh, really finally scoring. I love Ryan Anderson. I think he's having a first team all ACC type of year. He's third in the conference in scoring and rebounding. The Sunday matchup is a great one. Maryland and Miami. I'd love it more if the Terps had won the other night. Yeah, and it's, uh, they start off uh, 13 wins after that initial loss. But Miami, very impressive. Two road wins to start out their season. Alex Len has to worry about Kenny Kaji and Julian Gamble this upcoming weekend. The big one Saturday afternoon. Number one Duke, number 20 North Carolina State. Blue Devils 15-0. The Wolfpack 13-2. You have Mason Plumley, arguably the best player in the country so far. You have C.J. Leslie, the preseason ACC Player of the Year. 
So, the key to the game, though, might be a guy who's not playing at all. Ryan Kelly out indefinitely, the power forward for Duke with a foot injury. What makes him so effective, and what can Duke do to try to replace him? Well, it's so tough, Jeff, that he's another one of those guys who's a stretch four. He can shoot the three. He really spreads things out defensively. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be hard to replace him. The guys who will come behind, Josh Harrison, Emil Jefferson, Alex Murphy, don't have those skill sets but uh, more defensive players, so I think the onus is going to fall on the other perimeter players to get open looks. Well, I'll tell you what, since the start of the year, we've certainly seen Quinn Cook step up in a big way, including a career-high 27 points the other night. More on this game coming up. And speaking of Cook, he's one of the ACC guards up for some postseason hardware. Here's what's happening in the ACC now. Cook, one of 20 finalists for the Bob Cousy Award, which goes to the nation's best point guard. Coach K could not be happier with the way Cook has played stepping into the starting lineup. Today, or tomorrow, you see Cook face off with Lorenzo Brown. The NC State guard is also a finalist. He's averaging 13 points, 7 assists, 4 rebounds a game. Also on the list, Virginia Tech's Eric Green. He leads the nation at scoring at 24, more than 24 points a game. He's been great, just not getting enough help. Florida State is the top ACC school in the latest Learfield Directors Cup standings. And all five ACC schools are in the top 21. That's better than any conference. The Knowles third in the country, UNC fifth, after the women's soccer team won the national title. The Learfield Directors Cup goes to the school with the best overall athletic performance in all sports. Al Golden has brought back a former Hurricane star. Ex-Florida international head coach Mario Cristobal is back at his alma mater as associate head coach. Cristobal played for Miami during the glory days from 88 to 92 and was also an assistant at the U for three seasons. And one of Cristobal's former teammates at Miami, Rob Chudzinski, has been named the new head coach of the Cleveland Browns. After graduating from Miami, he was an assistant at the U for a decade before making the jump to the NFL. All right, coming up. We have Mike's predictions for the games this weekend, and he goes against the machine. Who knows better, man or machine, with this weekend's games? Also, NC State's Lorenzo Brown. Having a great year so far. Can he be a difference maker tomorrow going up against the top team in the country? We'll talk about Low Brown next. You can't keep greatness in a box, so we won't. The ACC mobile app presented by Outback Steakhouse. Imagine seeing this on this. That's greatness. For the ACC schools you live for, it's the app you can't live without. Available on your iPhone, iPad, Android, and Nokia Lumia Windows phone. The ACC mobile app. Live games, video, scores, stats, news, and greatness. Search ACC Sports on your mobile device. Out with the old and in with the delicious. Commit to bold taste with the new flavor resolutions menu at Ruby Tuesday. Ten entrees starting at $9.99. Try our savory barbecue brushed ribs and bacon wrapped shrimp. Or take it up a notch by adding coconut crusted shrimp to our mango salsa topped Caribbean chicken. Plus, enjoy our endless garden bar. Free with any chef inspired entree. Ruby Tuesday. It's all good here. Start the new year with savings. Visit rubytuesday.com today for a $5 coupon. The ACC Digital Network, the ultimate video destination for ACC fans. Exclusive highlights, live streaming games and original live programming, unique access to the student athletes of our time and the legendary voices of all time. Defining moments, personal stories, incredible analysis from authentic ACC sources, cutting edge content from the leaders in the digital space. The ACC Digital Network, brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. Chase Sapphire, this is Casey from Springfield. Oh, hello. Hello? Yes, I didn't realize you'd be talking to an actual person. You don't need to come zero. I'm here. Reach a person, not a prompt, whenever you call Chase Sapphire. ACC stars are in every NFL playoff game this weekend. UVA quarterback Matt Schaub, the 2002 ACC Player of the Year, leads the Texans against former Miami defensive lineman Vince Wilfork and the New England Patriots. Of course, Schaub's favorite receiver is another former Kane, Andre Johnson. The NFC features a battle of former ACC quarterbacks. Seattle, of course, has Russell Wilson, who played at NC State for three years before transferring. And Atlanta, the Falcons, they have Matt Ryan, who started at Boston College. He was the 2007 ACC Player of the Year. That's going to be a great matchup, the Seahawks and the Falcons. Two explosive ACC receivers in the Baltimore-Denver matchup. One of Peyton Manning's favorite targets, Demarius Thomas from Georgia Tech. The Ravens go with Torrey Smith out of Maryland. Of course, the Ravens also have former Canes stars, Ray Lewis 
and Ed Reed. Another former Terp. We go from Torrey Smith to Vernon Davis lining up for the 49ers against the Packers. The Niners running back, of course, the Canes Frank Gore. The Packers have another Kane, cornerback Sam Shields, and ex-BC star defensive lineman B.J. Raji. All right, welcome back to ACC Live. This is Friday, which means it's tip-off, which means Mike Jaminski is here to tell you what's going to happen this weekend. The show's just started this week. We take you all the way through the week, from telling you what's happened over the weekend all the way to predicting the next weekend's games. Every noon here on the ACC Digital Network, and tweet us as well. Follow our Twitter feed at the ACCDN. He's at GMAN43Duke. I am at G Jeff Fischel. The big game, of course, we've been talking about it. Number 20, NC State. Number one, Duke. While Coach K is worried about replacing Ryan Kelly, Mark Gottfried has a great problem. Everywhere he turns, he has a guy who wants to score and can score. But this week's spotlight player may be the key, Lorenzo Brown. Yeah, I think Lorenzo Brown is, is the guy who really leads this team. And uh, as he plays, his, plays, his team plays much better. And uh, take a look at uh, some of the things that, that he can do. And uh, really a versatile player. This is... Uh, NC State loves to get out on the floor and run the break, and this is what he does. You see the nice spacing by the Wolf Pack, opens up a lot of driving lanes, and uh, Lorenzo Brown, great off the dribble. In the penetration here, Ryan Anderson has to step up, and uh, underneath, it's an easy layup inside. So that's uh, it's one of the things that he does. Also, defensively, a great player. You see him in the background, kind of playing that strong safety, roaming around, looking right. for passing lanes. Shoots the gap here well, and. This is, again, out in the open floor doing what they do best. And he, he does a nice job here of letting the break develop. Howell coming in a little late, but he's got Rodney Purvis on the left wing wide open for an easy three. What always strikes me about Lorenzo Brown is he's always so composed, always so calm, and no matter even at no matter how quickly he's playing. And at, at 6'5", he's, he can go in and rebound and finish <laughs> as well. I love big guards, Jeff. <laughs> he has been great in every facet of the game this season. So. Will NC State beat Duke? It's time to unleash the computer. What does it think of Duke and North Carolina State? John Pence, the creator and editor of SCAAHoops.com, tells us how the computer sorted out the Ryan Kelly injury and who the computer says will win. Well, the big game to watch this weekend is NC State and Duke. Uh, Duke's playing the first true road game of the year. Uh, talented NC State offense against a tough Duke defense. But the real storyline is Ryan Kelly not playing. And uh, I took a look with our uh, SCACCHoops.com game simulator at what's the, the difference with Kelly playing and not playing. Uh, with Kelly in the lineup, uh, Duke was actually favored to win 72-64. Uh, to 64. With Kelly out of the lineup, Duke wins 71-70. That's it. It shows Kelly's impact in the game. It's interesting that uh, Kelly's impact is actually more on the defensive side for Duke. But either way, Duke wins uh, and look for a 71-70 win from Duke on Saturday. I was not expecting that, John. Thanks again. By the way, uh, you can run his computer game simulator to have any two college basketball teams play. Go to scahoops.com. I wasn't expecting that because Kelly's shooting like 68% from threes over the last nine games before he got hurt. Yeah, I would, I would have thought his impact would have been more on the offensive end of the floor, but a uh, good defensive player, and, his, and he would have had a challenge with C.J. Leslie. Uh, so it's going to be it's – it's a huge game for the Wolfpack. All right, so let's see now what the picks are from, from Mike – from fans on Facebook and from the machine. First, we see Virginia Clemson. Jaminski, you pick Clemson. You agree with the computer, but the fans like UVA. But the, uh, yeah, I, I like Clemson at home, especially, um, you know, the scoring the ball a little bit better. But here's the big one. Duke. The fans like still like Duke. John Pence still likes Duke. The computer does, but you're sticking. You're going with the. You're going with the Wolfpack. I, I think they step up in this game, and uh, it, it makes it's a statement game for them. It's maybe the most important one they've had under Gottfried. I'm surprised the computer is picking North Carolina the way Florida State's been playing and the way North Carolina's been playing. Yeah, they they really struggled in the non-conference, but I think that Florida State's figured it out, and traditionally they play Duke and Carolina well at home. All right, let's look at these last three games of the weekend. Man versus fans versus machine. Virginia Tech, Georgia Tech. You agree with the computer, Georgia Tech, the fans like Virginia Tech, Boston College, Wake, everybody likes the Eagles. And then Miami, Maryland, again, I think this one's going to be a fun one. You're, you're going with the Canes. It's hard to argue with the way they've played. No, and two tough road wins to start off. I think they get home and take care of business. The great thing about uh, the game simulator on SEACCHoops.com, it actually predicts the score as well. You can actually break it down into individual stats over every game if you'd like. Again, SEACCHoops.com. 
we'll look at how you know we'll every week right we'll go we'll see how man versus machine we'll help, see how mike does against the against the computer all right it's time now to go to our hidden gem one last thing before we go we found this on ebay we want mike we want to surprise you with this it's an acc basketball board game circa 1980 called acc action basketball it has stats cards for every team in the conference we found the duke playing card amongst all the teams and in fact when you go looking digging deep into that duke playing card they're on top Jaminski, 21 and 10 is that right 21 and 11 in fact is that yeah, right that was, that was pretty much my career average uh, right at that number <laughs> but you can see uh, how old that card it's is it's like parchment <laughs> i think <Yeah. laughs> Did they find that next to the Dead Sea Scrolls? <laughs> That's exactly right. Uh, I was actually all set to bid on this. Uh, I did want to play it to find out, but it was going to take my entire January s salary paycheck. Um, <laughs> but, but we dug that up. Actually, thanks to Kelly Nash here at Nash Sports. She's the one that dug this up. All right, remember, you get the best must-see moments, the best highlights here on the ACC Digital Network. So follow us here all weekend log on our YouTube channel. And coming back on Monday, J.R. Reed is in the hot seat. He'll break down all the games, everything that happened over the weekend. That's ACC Live every Monday through Friday here at noon on the ACC Digital Network. Thanks.